professor announces that three-fifths of the class, so three-fifths of the class, passed the test. If there are 80 students in the class, how many passed the test? So the idea here is that I'm doing three-fifths of, which is also the same as multiplication, three-fifths of 80 equals to how much? So let's write this out again. It's just three-fifths times 80. And there's a number of different ways that I can go about solving this. Now probably the easiest way is um, probably the easiest way would be to turn them both into fractions. That might not sound like an easy thing to do. However, any number by itself, like 80, can be made into a fraction by just putting it over 1. And nothing could be easier than multiplying fractions. When you're multiplying fractions, even when they have different denominators, all you have to do is multiply the top, the tops, sorry. So 3 times 80 over the bottoms, multiplied as well. 5 times 1, 3 times 80 is 240. 5 times 1 is 5. So now I have my answer. But you can see that this answer doesn't look the same as any of these. So that's because I don't have this simplified. Now, there's not many things that will go into both 240 and 5 at the same time. But 5 is probably the easiest one to try. So let's see how many times 5 goes into 5. That's one time. How many times does 5 go into 240? 5 into 240. Well, 5 goes into 2, no times. 5 goes into 24, 4 times. 4 times 5 is 20. This leaves a remainder of 4. 5 doesn't go into 4, but I can bring this down to get 40. 5 goes into 40 8 times. So my answer is 48 over 1. But like I said, over here, any number is able to be made into a fraction by just putting it over 1. By the same token, 48 over 1 is just 48. Because if I wanted to turn 48 into a fraction, I would put it over 1. That doesn't change it. 48 over 1 is the same as saying 48. So my answer here is D48.